This one, I'm going to show you how to turn your uh, Premiere Pro into something that runs as smoothly as butter. Now, uh, I know whenever you are editing and you get that choppy playback or you're just, your computer is just acting up, it can turn editing from a pretty fun activity to do, you know, like something that feels like a hobby, even if you're doing it as a job. Um, and it can turn it into quite a nightmare where you just wanna smash your computer and rage uh, furiously, right? Uh, it can be very, very annoying to have a lot of lag when you're editing. So I'm going to show you some of the best practices I learned over the last few years. Um, to make sure your computer runs as smoothly as possible. Now, keep in mind, your hardware itself is still going to have probably the biggest impact in how well your Premiere Pro runs. Like for example, now I'm using, you know, um, like a $4,000 16 inch MacBook Pro. Obviously this is going to run smoother and faster than like a base MacBook that you can buy for $900, right? So your, your hardware will have a lot of you know impact on how well your software can run but there are still a lot of settings you can use to optimize your computer's performance as much as possible so let's get straight into it first thing uh, i like to do always is to make sure to go here and uh, go to preferences uh, and then i like to go to media cache and then every once in a while you want to remove media cache files and uh, i like to click on delete unused media cache files right so cache files are basically like automatically generated pre-render files and audio, like miscellaneous stuff basically uh, that Premiere Pro creates when uh, you are editing. And these can take up a lot of space on your computer and also just make everything run a lot more um, laggy. Um, Cause you know, it's good, like it's necessary for you, for Premiere to create these files when you are, so when you are editing the certain project, you know, it runs smoothly and everything. But then once you are done with like old projects and everything, those cache files keep piling up and slowing down your system. So you want to make sure to remove those and empty your cache files every once in a while. Also here in media cache management, uh, I like to set it up to automatically delete cache files older than, and then I actually like to put it down to like 20 to 30 days. So I'm just going to put 30 days. Um, and um, yeah. And also here in the location, one thing uh, I think you can do if you want, uh, I mean, you can, I know you can do this. Uh, I personally don't at the moment because I have a very big SSD on this computer. But, uh, you know, if you if you don't have that much space of uh, fast storage or anything like that, you can get like an external SSD and, um, you know, put the, your uh, cache files on just that one. Or if you have like a PC and you have an extra SSD in there, uh, separate for your cache files uh, that can help a lot as well um, to make sure that you are not using up all the space super fast on your computer and also to make sure everything runs smoothly um, so ideally you want to have your cache files on fast storage like an SSD and um, you know somewhere where it can pile up and it's not gonna be a problem for you now the next thing I like to do is go to media and then here uh, for most projects I just have uh, enable proxies disabled so I don't want to have proxies on because they also makes like uh, a ton of like take up a ton of space i will explain what proxies are there is a great use case for them sometimes when you're working with huge files but um and like large resolutions but uh you know for most projects i don't like to have proxies enabled because they take up insane amount of space and here you also want to disable automatically refresh growing files so these two uh, you know settings here in the media section are also going to make sure that your premiere runs more smoothly Now the next setting we are going to go to is the memory memory settings and here you want to make sure you have optimized rendering for performance clicked instead of memory and um, Here you can see you can dedicate like how much uh, RAM is reserved for other applications on your computer so you can see my computer has 32 gigabytes of RAM and um, you want to dedicate as much of that as possible towards Adobe uh, applications. So in this case, I have 26 gigabytes, uh, you know, available for Premiere, Photoshop, all those things. So 
that is ideal. Um, obviously, if you only have like 16 gigabytes of RAM or eight gigabytes, you want to make sure you have a couple gigabytes of RAM reserved for other stuff as well. But um, tr here, just make sure you have um, as much of it kind of dedicated um, towards Premiere Pro as possible while keeping a couple gigabytes reserved for other apps as well. Um, you know, the more RAM you can dedicate towards these Adobe apps, the smoother they are going to be able to run basically. So for the next tip to make sure your um, footage runs smoothly, there is this little drop down menu here, which says select playback resolution. So um, if you have issues with uh, choppy playback, you can always go here and set your resolution, uh, your playback resolution to maybe uh, half, right? And uh, this is going to make, you know, uh, your playback a lot smoother immediately. You know, if it's still choppy at uh, half, then you can put it down to one fourth. And uh, as you can see, like I can still see what I'm editing. You know, it's not as sharp as at full resolution, but that doesn't really matter for most of the stuff when you're editing anyways. Um, so use this slider um, to, you know, drop down the resolution of the playback speed if your footage is choppy. All right, so for this next one, I'm going to put some effects on this uh, video to make sure it's going to, uh, you know, be a lot harder for my computer to play this back. Uh, and um, now what I'm going to show you is if you click here on this uh, button editor, there is this uh, little thing here, which is the global effects mute. Now you want to add this global effects mute to your um, kind of like toolbar here and then what this is going to do is if you click this it's going to mute all the effects that are applied to um, you know all the footage on your timeline basically so the cool thing is this doesn't actually delete those uh, effects so you still have them right um, but it's going to mute them from your playback so my computer can easily play it back now and uh, if I'm done with the chopping up of the footage, for example, on the timeline or, or doing the actual like, you know, uh, nitty gritty stuff, I can just click it again and boom, it's going to re-enable all the effects on my timeline, no issues, and I can render out my project and I was able to edit with all the stuff being there, but not my computer not having to like render those in real time uh, again and again. Now, the next thing is for large files, you want to use proxies uh, if your computer cannot deal with them uh, any other way. So uh, I know I said um, I don't like to use proxies a lot of the time. And the reason for that is because they take up a lot of space on your computer. But if you need to create proxies, um, proxies are basically like a duplicate version, a lower resolution duplicate of the certain file you are creating the proxy for. And, um, you know, Premiere will use those when you are editing the, your proxy file. And then when you render it, it's actually going to replace it to the original one um, seamlessly. And then your computer only has to deal with them at the rendering part. You can edit your footage smoothly uh, in the meantime. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, I know it's a little bit complex, but basically you put your high resolution footage into Premiere, right? Then you create a proxy file for it, um, or Premiere creates that more specifically, which is a lower resolution duplicate of that. You use that on your timeline to edit the whole thing, the lower resolution one, so your computer can easily deal with the file. And then at the end of it, Premiere will uh, re-replace it with the original one when you are exporting it, so you are not going to lose any resolution or quality from your footage. Uh, and then your computer didn't have to you know, deal with the huge file while editing, only at the rendering part. So I think that makes sense. Um, so here's how you create proxies. First, you wanna make sure you have uh, proxies enabled added here. So if you go to the toolbar editor again, uh, this is the uh, toggle proxies uh, button. So you want to add that on your toolbar as well. And um, now we are going to create a proxy from this one. So to do that, uh, what we need to do is go here down to proxy, create proxies. Uh, here you can create the format for it. Uh, I like to use QuickTime if I'm using a Mac, but you know, if you're using Windows, just use H.264. And then you can uh, select what resolution proxy you want. Uh, ideally, you know, most of the time you want to create a low resolution proxy from it. Um, and then here you can select where you want these proxies to be stored. 
I'm going to leave it uh, next to the original media, but you can also have like, again, a separate drive just for your proxies and put all of those there. Uh, but yeah, finished um, encoding this one so I can, you know, go back to Premiere. And now when I add this on my timeline and I click here on, in, on uh, toggle proxies, uh, it's going to replace it with the proxy and, uh, you know, it's going to have a really, really smooth playback again. So, you know, you can, um, if you have a bunch of footage here, you would just select all of them at the same time, right? And then right click, create proxies, uh, use um, the Adobe encoder to create the proxies for it. Put those on your, you know, put the footage back on your timeline, toggle proxies, and then you'll have you know, smooth playback speed, even using like 8K footage from a RAD camera, which is pretty cool. All right, so these are just some of my favorite settings to use to speed up your Premiere workflow. I hope this was helpful and uh, see you in the next video.